Often I read articles about personal development that inspire me to make content. Lately I've been focusing a lot on attachment theory and it dawned onto me that a lot of the concepts there make excellent suggestions for leadership as well. So what I want to do today is give you five tips that I took away from this relationship advice that helps you to become a better leader and a happier person. Welcome to the channel. My name is Kai, if it's the first time for you here, and I focus here on advice that helps you to grow personally, professionally, and as a leader, and to live a life that you are proud of. Let's get straight into our content. And when we look at attachment theory, it's about different attachment styles. And the concept here is that to have a happy and healthy relationship, you need to be securely attached. Now, what does that mean for us as leaders? What does it mean when we want to utilize that knowledge for our lives? The first point is that securely attached people do not seek validation from their partners. That is something I see in leaders as well. Sometimes we go up to our boss and we want to hear how great we are or how great our team is. And sometimes we even go to our team and we seek their validation. We want to be best friends with them. And of course, we love to hear what great ideas we bring to the table or what a great leader we are. However, if you want to be the great leader, then you don't seek validation from those who you lead. You rather base your self-worth on the achievements that you have that got you to the position that you are in right now. And the other thing that you can do is to keep a healthy distance between your personal life and your professional life so that you don't have to seek validation from those who you lead because you have plenty of other things going on in your life. The second topic that's very fitting is that securely attached people don't avoid talking about issues when they come up. In a relationship, it's very common that you don't want to hurt the other person's feeling. And of course, you want to have a great relationship going forward. So you don't bring some of the things up that bother you. And the same thing can happen in the workplace. Maybe you have a high performer, but there is a certain issue where you need to see improvement or you want to see a change. But rather than bringing it up, you are afraid to hurt their feelings and afraid that maybe they even want to leave your team. And so rather than talking about it, you delay the conversation, sometimes forever, sometimes long enough so that nobody remembers the details of what we need to talk about. Rather than doing that, have the conversation, but in the right place and at the right time. The right time is when you are uninterrupted. It's a bad idea to bring up the topic when the other person is just heading out for a lunch break or a holiday. The right way is to focus on the solution rather than just pointing out a problem. Securely attached people also don't see a relationship as them against the partner. And that is something that can very easily happen with you as a leader. You have a lot of responsibilities towards your boss, towards your clients, towards your stakeholders. And easily you can then blame it onto the team that they haven't done the work that they are supposed to do. And easily it becomes you against the team. Don't fall into that trap. Great leaders use the word we far more often than the word you. The fourth point to make is that securely attached people don't cling onto a relationship. Yes, you may love your partner very much, but if all you can think about is the fear of losing them, it doesn't make for a very healthy relationship. It's not different in a work relationship where as leaders sometimes we can feel very afraid to lose our best team members. And if that is the case for you, then ask yourselves a few questions. The first is, why are you feeling this way? Is it something you picked up from the person themselves, the body language they have, the words that they use, maybe that they are more critical towards the company than they used to be. If that is the case, it's something that you can bring up in a conversation. Sometimes it is just us as leaders who are afraid to lose our best employees and there isn't really any basis for that. 
And sometimes we know that maybe we could do something a little bit better, but we haven't done that so, and that's where the fear comes from. And if that is the case, then you know what to do. Number five, securely attached people don't have unhealthy expectations of each other. In a relationship, sometimes you know each other so well that you almost assume that the other person can read your mind. They surely must know what ticks you off or what you want them to do. And the same can happen in the work environment where, especially as a leader, if you've worked with someone already for a very long time, they must for sure know what the department needs right now, what your expectations of them are and what you want them to start doing. And all the while, you've never taken the time to actually articulate those things to them. So if you find yourself disappointed with your team, then ask yourself as well whether you've actually articulated your expectations or whether you are carrying unhealthy expectations. Hey, quick bonus tip here. Don't overthink it. Use the things that we talked about rather as a guide than a rule. But if you're prone to overthinking, then maybe the video that I link here on the screen right now may help you. I would look forward to seeing you over there. And if you've seen me a couple of times and haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do so. I really appreciate it. See you next time. Mm -hmm.